In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this adorable Phillies baseball cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So I'm going to show you how to decorate this adorable Phillies baseball cake. And if you are not from Philly and you don't like the Phillies, it's fine. I'm sure you're still a good person, <laughs> but you can use this as inspiration to make a cake for your team. Now, I am starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake, fill, ice, refrigerate cakes, all of that is going to be linked in the description, as well as any of the tools and videos that I use, they will all, or videos I reference, will all be linked down there as well. So let's get started. To start, I wanna let you know that I have Gumtex powder, Tylos powder, CMC powder, it's all the same thing. This is mixed into my fondant and it's gonna help the fondant set hard. It's gonna be so much easier to work with. I am starting by making the stripes. So I'm rolling out red and white fondant really thin. Use my fondant smoother to smooth it all out. And I have this ribbon cutter. I will link this in the description. And I'm gonna make the red stripes a little thinner than the white stripes. And I'm just cutting a bunch of stripes. I have this cake box lid. I cut the lids off a of cake box boxes and save them for things like this and I'm going to smooth out the edges of all the stripes that I cut and then use my rulers to straighten these so they don't get distorted and let's set those aside now I want to make the white stripes wide enough so this button can fit on there so I'm just measuring and making it wide enough so the button can fit on there and I'm cutting a bunch of white stripes I'm doing the same thing that I did for the red ones and I'm smoothing the edges putting them on the cake box lid and I'm going to take my rulers and straighten them out. And the one in the front, I want stitching on the edges. So I'm just taking the stitching wheel. I'm putting a stripe in between the two rulers so it doesn't move and stitching that on. And let's set those aside. Now I'm going to cut straight edges on the bottoms of all of the red and the white stripes. Great, now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid, I'm not gonna mess it up. I'm marking the front of the cake. The front of the cake is what looks most symmetrical. I'm going to wipe the cake board clean because there's some icing on there from when I iced the cake. Get a little bit of piping gel and a paintbrush and I'm painting the entire side of the cake with piping gel. And then I'm gonna get a little bit of water and thin that out. And then the cake board got a little wet, so I'm just taking a dry paper towel and wiping that. And I'm starting with that stripe that I stitched, and what, and I want to put that in the very front and center of the cake. I have these angled scissors, and I'm just going to snip the top off so it's even with the top of the cake. And then I'm taking a right stripe, uh, a red stripe, <laughs> and putting that on the right side, and going to do that on the left side. So I'm starting in the front of the cake, and I'm building my way to the back. That way, everything is nice and even and pretty in the front of the cake, and if the pattern doesn't match, it won't match in the back, and that's okay. So I'm starting on the right, and then I'm going to the left, and I'm going to the right. You know, I'm building my way all the way to the back, and you can see that white space that's open, and it's a little uneven, so I cut a stripe uh, so it could fit in there, and the pattern doesn't ma match up, so it's the back of the cake. That's why that's the back of the cake. <laughs> Pushing that down there with my fondant smoother, and that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now I have a cutting board with a piece of non-slip pad underneath it so it doesn't slide around, an X-Acto knife with a wet paper towel, and a Dresden tool, and a little bit of water. And I measured my cake, and I printed this out the size that I want it to be. I have some thin red fondant here, and I'm going to do my trace cut and smooth method. You can make anything out of fondant if you do this method. Method. I'm carefully using my Dresden tool to trace this on the fondant. Make sure you get the inner pieces as well. Don't press too hard because you don't want to poke a hole in the fondant. Peel it back and look, you can see that transferred on there. Now I always recommend that you cut the center of the letters first and smooth them out before you cut the rest of the letters. It's so much easier to cut the center pieces before you cut the rest of it out. Just trust me. <laughs> And anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to smooth it. You'll see. So then once those center pieces are cut out, I'm going to cut out the rest of the letters. And it's jagged. Like whenever I cut anything out of fondant, there's jagged edges. And I like to take my time and smooth it. It takes time to smooth all these pieces. But I'm telling you, it makes your pieces look so much better if you do that. Carefully peel that away so you don't mess up any of the letters. 
and again, taking the time to smooth it out. And then I want to get a background on here. So I'm flipping this upside down on the picture. You'll see why. And I'm getting a little bit of water on the back. You don't want to use too much water because you don't want the water to seep out just enough to make it stick. And then I want to take my the back of my paintbrush and I'm aligning that perfectly on the picture backwards. And I have this piece of white fondant rolled out pretty thin. I'm flipping it over so the smooth side is facing down. And I'm carefully laying that on top and voila. <laughs> It's just the easier way to transfer that to another piece of fondant. I'm using my tools to get that in the right spot, and then I'm putting that P on there as well, and that just fit in there. I just got it <laughs> in the right spot. The P was almost hanging off the edge, but that's okay. I happen to have the star cutter. That's the perfect size, so I'm just using that star cutter, and again, everything that I use will be linked in the description. I'm getting these stars on here for the eyes, and I'm just using the picture as reference to see where to place the stars, and then I want to cut an even white border around the entire thing so I'm just getting really close and making sure that the border is the same width around the entire word And again, once I cut it out, I'm gonna take my tools and my fingers and smooth out all the jagged edges. Let's realign that on top of the picture so it's in the right position. I don't want it to dry out, so I'm putting it in a Ziploc bag and let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the names. These are for two brothers. So I printed these out the size that I want it to be, again, and I'm doing the trace cut and smooth method. Now I have a video that I show you how to make these baseball names and I go into detail, so I'm gonna link that in the description for you if you want to see how I get the, the font for this and how I print it out and everything but I'm doing the same thing so I traced it onto the fondant and I'm cutting it out and carefully peeling the fondant away so I don't mess up the letters and smooth my cuts and then I'm going to realign that back on top so it goes to the correct shape and just do that for the rest of the letters and that looks good and I'm going to again flip it over get water on the back and get the get it in the right position and then get a piece of white fondant and flip it over and transfer it onto the fondant just like I did for the Phillies logo and cut an even border around the entire name. And again, using my tools and my fingers to smooth it out. I may not show me doing that every time, but I do that every single time. Realigning the names on top of that so it doesn't get distorted and I don't want it to dry out. Gonna put it in a Ziploc bag and seal that and let's set that aside. Now I got this 3D chocolate baseball mold a while ago and you can see on the right how it comes and I have to cut it so I can make it easier to work with. So I wanna show you how I did that. I cut the pieces and then I put it together and then I took my scissors and cut it a little bit more so I can get the clips around it. I hope this makes sense. And then I needed a place to, I needed a little opening so I get the chocolate in and I cut little triangles in both of them. So when I put it together, you could see how it fits together, right? So you have to work with it a little bit once you get it, but I found that online and I will link it below. Now I have these clips here and I like to clip them. So you see how I had to cut it close to the ball so I can get the clips really close. You wanna have it, you know, cut the plastic with a tiny border around so you can clip it really close so the chocolate doesn't seep out. I have that little bowl there and I have this icing bag and I'm going to fill this icing bag with the entire 12 ounce bag of these meltables. I love these ones. I got them at Michael's. I will find them and link them in the description. Fold that over. I'm gonna put it in the microwave for like 20 seconds, flip it over, do another 20 seconds, flip it over, do another 20 seconds. So I melt it and there you go, looks perfect. So let's fold that down. Real quick, just wanna show you, in your bowl, you can always put some paper towels or a towel down there to help support that ball so it doesn't fall over. So I'm gonna cut the tip off of this bag and then you see why I had to cut those little notches in there? I, I put the tip of the bag in there and then I'm going to squeeze that chocolate in there and fill it the whole way up. So I'm shaking it so I can get the chocolate all the way down. You don't want the chocolate to come out of that top hole. So I'm filling it just to the top. Good, and then you have to tap it, give it a little tappy <laughs> and you have to make sure that the chocolate is 
covering the entire mold. So you don't want to see any clear bubbles through the mold. And if the chocolate starts to come out of that little hole at the top, that's why I have that little paper towel and I keep wiping that excess chocolate away. And of course I'm out of frame here, but I'm filling the rest of the chocolate, rest of the ball with chocolate once that's done. And there, that looks really good. And I want to take these two skewers and stick them in the bottom. And that, that way those are going to stick into the cake. And now I'm going to set that in the refrigerator for a couple hours for that chocolate to set. Good, now I'm making the border. I made sure that I have this ribbon wide enough. And you can see how thick that brown fondant is. And let's straighten that with the ruler. And then I have thinner brown fondant and I'm cut using the strip cutter to cut a bunch of strips. You'll see why, but just see that I'm doing that for now. And now I am, this is a pain in the butt, but I'm cutting those little strips in half. And then I'm cutting them um, a little over an inch long. And this will make sense <laughs> as I show you what I do with them. Now I wanna airbrush this. I have some brown airbrush coloring. You must use airbrush coloring in an airbrush gun. And if I turn the dial all the way down, it gets a really spotty spray. And if I turn it up really high, it gets a really like full spray. So I wanted it somewhere in the middle. And I am just spraying this. Don't cover the entire thing. I'm just randomly spraying this just to get a little texture on here and make sure I get the edges. I love this airbrush machine. I will find it and link it in the description for you. Once you have an airbrush machine, you're going to use it all the time. I absolutely love this thing. So there's a little variation. It looks a little leathery, if you will. And now let's stack this. So I got that out of the fridge. I'm using that ruler to measure how tall my straws have to be and I'm marking the end with a marker and I have a stacking tutorial where I go into detail on how I stack cakes I will link that in the description so let's cut that marker off and then I'm going to stick the straws in the cake and sink them down get a little buttercream down and I am going to wash my hands I'm always washing my hands, but I wash my hands again before I touch this cake. And I'm going to take that out of the refrigerator. That icing is solid. That's why I can handle this cake like this and not mess it up. The, uh, the icing is cold. Stack that on top. Make sure it's level. I'm cutting the dowel to the right size. Hammer that down in there and countersink it so it goes down through the cake board. And cover that little hole with some buttercream. Now I have some piping gel and I'm going to put that border on. It's going to be like a baseball glove border. So I'm getting piping gel around the perimeter, starting in the very back where that pattern doesn't match on the bottom tier. Wrap it around where it meets. I'm just going to cut it and push that seam together and use a palette knife just to press that down to make sure it's all even. And then I'm cutting little points on the ends of all of these little stripes that I made. You will see why it's going to go into the holes a lot easier when they come to a point. And now I'm starting in the very front of the cake where that stitching seam is and I put it down on one side and I'm using that little ball tool to make a little hole. Take that off, get a little piping gel behind the back and then I'm putting one end in the hole and then stretching to the other end and using a tool to sink it in. So you see what I'm doing? It's a little hard to explain but use my tools to get it straight. And then I'm gonna do the other side. So I'm holding it up to see where the ends go and I'm using my ball tool to make little holes and get a little bit of piping gel on the back and stick it down and use my tools to countersink it down into the holes. And this is just like mimicking a baseball glove. Now I'm going to do the same thing around that entire border. So I'm, I'm skipping a little space and then starting all over again. Put it up there, see where the holes have to go, get some piping gel behind it, stick it down, and then use my ball tool, ball tool to countersink it. And then just I'm repeating the process around the entire cake. And again, like I did with the stripes, I started in the front, I went off to the right, and now I'm going off to the left just so everything is even in the front. And I'm doing the same process and I'm trying to make sure that I'm evenly spacing these around that entire cake. And look how beautiful that looks. Now I wanna airbrush it, so I'm bringing it back over to my airbrush. I have a little paper towel there that I can always use tester sprays on. And I'm spraying either side of all of the red stripes. So I'm doing this very carefully. I'm pulling the trigger back ever so slightly just to get a little bit of spray. And I'm holding the, the gun close to the cake so I can get a more precise spray. 
And then once I do the first coat, I'm just going around and seeing where I need to deepen these lines for as a second coat. And that looks really good. Now let's stick that back in the fridge. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the bat. I printed this out the size that I want it to be. And I'm going to do the trace cut and smooth method to make these decorations. So I'm tracing that white part onto the white fondant. And then I'm using my Dresden tool to make those little wooden line decorations in there. And let's cut that out. And I'm doing the same thing on the red fondant. And for the bottom part of the bat, I'm just doing that on the blue fondant. Since this cake is red, white, and blue. And then I'm going to make a blue background on here. So I'm getting some water behind each of the pieces and laying that down on the blue fondant. And then like I did before, cutting an even border around the entire piece. Nice, realign that on top of the picture, set that aside. And now the Fanatic, I'm starting with some thicker green fondant. You'll see why I do this. But I laid that on top, I, I printed it out the size I want it to be. And right here I'm looking past where those eyebrows are and figuring out where the green is. And I'm continuing the line. So I just want to figure out where that light green is and I'm tracing it onto the light green fondant. Now that looks a little weird, but just bear with me. I'm putting in the little details there. And since this is thicker fondant, anytime I cut anything out of thicker fondant, I always do a shallow cut first. This is going to create a line in the fondant that you can use as a guide to cut the rest of it out. If you do it this way, that you're not going to mess up the fondant when you cut it out. So see how I'm using that line as a guide now? And this looks horrible, so you need to work with it. <laughs> so I'm using my tools and my fingers just to press the fondant pieces that are sticking out back down on itself, flip it over and do the same thing from the front. Now I'm doing the same trace cut and smooth method for all the pieces of this. So do you see how I'm looking past those eyes, cutting behind the eyes? And I'm doing the same thing for this blue piece. Are you guys getting bored? It's the same thing. I just do the trace cut and smooth method for all of these decorations. It's a simple way to make these fondant decorations. And the same thing for the eyes. I'm tracing it onto white fondant and I'm keeping the eyes as one piece. I'm using a little piping tip to cut the pupils of the eyes, get a little bit of water behind it and stick them down. And then let's cut those eyes out and smooth my cut. Now I have some darker green fondant and I'm tracing these darker green details and doing the same process. And I just want to trace that light green section onto light green fondant as well. See how it all comes together? You get you get the idea, right? <laughs> and then this little re weird red tongue thing. <laughs> and also the Phillies hat. And this little P, look how small that is. It's really hard to, <laughs> it's kind of annoying to cut these really tiny pieces out, but uh, you could do it. You just gotta be a little patient. And I got a little bit of water behind that and stuck that pea down there. And now I'm getting water behind all these pieces and putting this all together. And I have the picture close for reference and I'm just trying to make it look like the picture. See, I have to lift the little eyebrows and get the hat underneath. And I have to do the same thing for the eyes. I have to lift that green part and then slide those eyes down underneath. And use my tools to get them in the right position. And I'm cutting the little top part of the hat as well. Good, now I wanna stick a skewer in here. I'm gonna twist it in there. I did wet the skewer. I wanna hold it up and see where it's gonna to be touching the cake. That's where the skewer is gonna go in. And I'm making sure I have it perfectly in the center so it's not poking out the front or the back. This is why I rolled that green fondant out thicker so this can fit in there. And let's set that aside. Now I'm doing the same trace cut and smooth method for the 
um, pennant. I almost called it a banner. It's a pennant. <laughs> so I'm tracing all the red part. This Phillies word, when it's really small, it's really hard to work with, but I'm doing the same thing. You know, trace it on there, cut it out, smooth my cuts. I'm getting that blue part a little bit wet and I'm sticking that skewer down on here and I'm putting this all together. So let's get some water behind that red piece and stick that down. And I'm just looking at the picture trying to make it look like the picture. So when I press that red piece down, I really wanted to make sure that it was like, like pushed down really hard over that skewer. And there's a little blue border around the white part. So I'm cutting it a little blue border on that bottom part. And there's no blue border under the red. So I'm cutting it exactly along the red. I just have to cut around that skewer to be able to cut this out. Removing that excess fondant from the back of the skewer. And that looks good and I totally forgot to film I did add that little white stripe on the left side as well now I'm making the belt so I rolled out red and white fondant and I'm doing the red line thinner and then the white line a little thicker because I want these white pieces to be able to fit over the red piece it will make sense as I show you what I'm doing <laughs> so I got this cake out of the refrigerator and I'm getting a little bit of piping gel around the bottom border and we're putting the belt on so I'm going to wrap this red piece around and I'm starting in the back and where it meets cut the seam and then I'm just going to spray some brown airbrush color around the bottom and the top of that red line. Good and now I'm trimming the white pieces and I'm having little white sections here so do you see how I make it fit? <laughs> and getting a little bit of water behind the back starting in the very front that's where that that stitching piece is and I'm making sure that goes over that red piece and I'm putting like four of these I'm doing one in the front two on the sides and one in the very back and that looks good and I'm using my airbrush gun and just painting or spraying <laughs> brown around the edges. Just give it a little more detail, take a wet paper towel and carefully wipe away the excess airbrush spray. I'm getting a little bit of Crisco in this button mold and I like to roll it out, flatten it out a little bit and then press it in there. I find that it's I get the best result when I do it that way. And then carefully peel it out. I will link that mold in the description. And now I got the Phillies logo out of the bag and I'm getting a little bit of piping gel behind the back and I want to center this on the front and I'm getting some piping gel behind each of the buttons as well and that's going on that stripe where I made that little stitching detail and I was a little bit out of frame for this so I'm sorry but I'm doing the same exact thing I got some piping gel behind the names and I'm sticking that on there And now I'm getting a little bit of glue around the perimeter of the cake board and wrapping the ribbon around there where it overlaps, get a little bit of more glue down and press it down. Great, let's put that back in the fridge. Now let's take this out of the refrigerator. This is solid, it's been in there for a couple hours and when you peel this away, you're gonna see that there's a little seam where it met so we have to get rid of that. What I like to use is a palette knife. A palette knife is not as sharp as a regular knife so I'm not going to mess up this chocolate. I'm just kind of shaving that extra chocolate off of the ball and into the sink. And I'm just wiping the excess off with my hands. That ugly part is gonna be sticking on the cake so you're not gonna see it. Stick that in a styrofoam block and I have an icing bag with a tip number two and a paper towel that I can keep wiping that off. And I'm setting my elbow on the countertop and I'm supporting my hand with my other hand. And look, I was like, is that a muscle? That's a muscle. <laughs> Man, my arm day is really starting to pay off. But anyway, that's how I'm holding my hand as I'm drawing these stitches on here. So I'm sticking that in the styrofoam block and I'm just doing these little V around the entire thing following that pattern that's already in there 
and I couldn't really draw anymore. So I lifted that up and now I shifted that. So now it's a little easier for me to continue that pattern the whole way around. And this is American buttercream. You can use royal icing if you want to. I'm gonna stick this back in the refrigerator so that icing will solidify. It took me about 10 minutes to finish this. I didn't breathe the whole time. My hand shakes, it's horrible. <laughs> but let's stick that back in the refrigerator. Now I got this out of the refrigerator and I'm gonna put this on here. So I'm sticking that bottom part in the, into the cake. And I'm holding this up here to see, should I put the ball back, the, the fanatic forward? I think that looks good here. So I'm sticking that down. And I'm sticking a toothpick next to the skewer in here so when I put it in there it's not going to twist. Get a little piping gel underneath where it's going to touch the cake and let's slide that down as well. And I'm getting a little piping gel behind the bat where it's going to touch the cake and stick that on. And where should I put this banner or the pendant? I keep calling it a banner. Should I put it on the side, on the top? I don't know. It's going to stick out too far on the side so I went with uh, sticking it down the top. And there is the cake. So cute. So there you go, how adorable is this little Phillies baseball cake? Now, a couple things that I wanted to go over with you. Any of the pictures that I used, I'm going to link that in the description for you. If you wanted to make the same design, you can do that. And I do have another video showing you how to make a 3D baseball cake topper. And I will link that in the description as well. However, that one is a little more advanced technique. It's a little more challenging to do. And this one is easier for beginners because it's easy to pour the chocolate into the mold. And then the hardest part about that is drawing the stitches on there and not shaking and holding your breath <laughs> and of course I'm filming and someone is like sawing out back <laughs> doesn't it always happen like that but anyway this cake is five inch and the bottom tier I did a three layer seven inch cake so sometimes I do three layers instead of two layers toward it I just do three regular layers that way I can get it to be taller and I have more room to decorate. If I only did a two layer torted, it would probably be about an inch shorter and I wouldn't have enough room to have the belt and the buttons and everything. So I think about that in advance before I bake the cake that I'm gonna need taller a taller tier so I'm gonna bake another cake. And I have a video where I go into detail about using different sizes and different heights for your cakes to get visual interest, and I will link that in the description. But this cake feeds about 30 people or so. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. Please like this video if you liked it, and if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is pinned in the comments below. Please keep in touch on socials. And check out my website. Everything's listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next. I'll put the baseball video here. And hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.